it's my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker this week. It's Teamworks Director of Marketing, Ray Coppinger. Welcome to the webinar, Ray. Thanks, Alan. Great to be here. Well, Ray, it's it's been a real roller coaster over the past three months. Thankfully, we do have some vision of normality as businesses are are returning. So, um, how are you finding home and work life at the moment? It's 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 a difficult one in some ways because my gut reaction is, you know, I live about an hour from Teamworks headquarters uh, in the city of Cork in the southwest here of Ireland. So, you know, home life for me has kind of meant that I saved like two and a half to three hours a day of a commute and I'm sure many of our customers and people on the webinar today will have similar kind of stories of some of the maybe positive kind of outcomes or side effects of being locked down and not being able to kind of travel into our offices so there's been some benefits for sure but I suppose I definitely gonna we would be kind of you know the context of what's happening in the world is definitely like a small scale side effect when you consider it's it's a huge global event and like it's affecting kind of negatively you know many many thousands of people but but overall Alan I'd say home life has been great um you know it's been lovely I suppose I've got three young kids so to be to be at home at 5.30 as opposed to 7.30 every evening or you know, to be there for breakfast um, has been a really nice kind of side effect. So overall, so far, so good. So just sure. to start off, can you give us a background on our marketing operations here in Teamwork? And I'm just referring to the tools, the structure and the methodologies. I guess, look, Teamwork, we have customers in 180 countries. So our, our marketing team has to be set up to, to, I suppose, to market globally. So we have a team that is set up across, I suppose, three broad buckets of, of, of responsibility and, and focus for us. So obviously Teamwork um, has been a high growth company and we, we have a, a part of our marketing team which is solely focused on demand generation and growth. So, so within that team, we have skills like, you know, paid advertising expertise. We have, you know, uh, people who run our marketing technology and I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit further down the track as well. So we have marketing technology, paid advertising, we have content as well, which is the is the fuel for all our demand generation activity. We have our content uh, resources within the demand generation team as well. Um, um, we have other areas like SEO and conversion optimization run out of that team as well. So all all aspects of marketing, you know, relating to acquiring new customers sit within our demand generation and growth team. And then outside of that, Alan, we have two other kind of broad teams or, or broad areas of focus. So we have our product marketers and marketing team. Um, and they align with our product management um, function here. So we have five products, obviously, at Teamwork, and our product marketers are kind of sit very close, closely with the product managers, and their role really is to to bring the product manager's um, kind of vision to life for the product through messaging, um, through um, sales enablement materials, through you know um, pricing, uh, you know pricing um, analysis and research, customer research, competitive analysis. So all of those things which really kind of help us to position our products in the market sit within product marketing. And then finally, we have we have a number of smaller teams then which kind of I would sit I would say sit within a brand effort. So we have a creative video team sitting within our within our um, within our marketing team as well. So in house we have you know two videographers who create our you know great customer testimonials etc. We have a website team who who manage Teamwork.com which is a you know, huge growth engine for the company. And we have our design resource as well. So you know, all of the great uh, illustrations and graphics we use across all our touch points sit within the marketing team as well. So that's kind of the structure of the team, Alan. And then just touch to, to briefly touch on technology. So you know, we, I suppose, run a fairly standard marketing technology stack. So we have a marketing automation platform, which is our kind of system of record for our marketing team. That integrates with our Teamwork CRM, our own product, which we we, we do our, our funnel management through our integration with Teamwork CRM. And then I think we have a lot of kind of um, you know third-party um, software which plugs into that to that core stack, which makes us, I suppose, a pretty a pretty well-rounded kind of marketing technology function. I think within the team. And then just a final point, Alan, on methodologies. I think you know Teamwork. Um, you know many of our customers have been with us for many years on the journey with Teamwork. We are a company uh, which has been led from a growth perspective by our product. So um, our, our original product teamwork was is a project management platform, and by by its nature, it encourages virality in its in its acquisition. So if you can imagine, Alan, somebody signing up for a teamwork account, they they um, they add fifteen or twenty or hundred users. All of those users become potential buyers for teamwork, and over the first thirteen or fourteen years of our of our company history that virality has been a huge driver of growth 
in the last number of years, what we've been trying to do on top of that product-led growth is layer in a deliberate kind of demand generation function where we go out and acquire specific types of customers who, um, who can help us grow even faster and further. So um, that's the way we've approached growth. So it's product-led growth has been the engine and we're layering on deliberate demand generation, um, outbound kind of marketing on top of that to, to accelerate our growth. So it's kind of a quick overview of marketing and teamwork. Here we are in summer 2020. It's, it's hard to believe that it's, it's this time already. Uh, the global market itself is, is facing challenges it's never seen before. What, is, or what are your observations of the, of the market from the past three months? I guess I'll like I'll approach this in just in two ways briefly, if that's okay. So so first of all, like teamwork as a business, we've seen the same kind of market conditions that like many many other companies will have seen over the last three months. So we've seen kind of like um, a drive for cost savings amongst our customers. So people want they're they're conscious of maybe an upcoming recession and they're trying to cut costs and save costs. They're trying to be efficient with their spend. Um, equally, we've seen in, from a new business perspective, we've seen some com some cost or prospective customers putting decisions on hold about when they're going to you know acquire new technology so they may not want to, to write you know write a check or, or sign contracts during the middle of, of the lockdown etc so from a market con conditions perspective we've seen the same things that most companies would have seen over the last three months when i look at it from a marketing perspective there's a, a couple of things that i call out so you know teamworks products two of them in particular teamwork and teamwork chat they're both products which lend themselves to supporting distributed teams. So a team that you know that needs to run where all the team members are not in the same place effectively. So we've seen a really kind of a big surge in search volume and demand for you know solutions and and, and technology which support distributed teams. So that's been one thing we've seen. Again, that's a pretty obvious thing. Other things we've seen from a marketing perspective though would be I think it's been quite a, um, a strange thing. I was going to refer to this earlier, kind of like how is life during lockdown, Alan? But I think when people have had to have this kind of hard kind of break on their, you know, that type of life where you're just on the go nonstop into the office, calls, meetings all day long, and you don't really, you know, I, I think the chance to kind of consume content and to kind of take time to kind of look at that white paper or download or read a blog or, or listen to that podcast, I think there's definitely been a, a greater consumption of content from a marketing perspective over the last few months, which has been a kind of an interesting um, side of it. I think there's been a lot of attention available amongst prospective buyers to, to put content out there that's relevant and to, to get kind of engagement with it. I think that's another thing that's been coming through. I think they'd be the key things I might call out from both a market and marketing perspective over the last few months. With your understanding of this market and this increased in demand for, for new content, how have you adjusted your strategy and process to, to match these modern challenges? So, so I guess in some ways, Alan, I, I would say that we, we haven't like radically kind of rewritten our, our, our playbook to kind of you know, adjust to this new reality or, or to kind of the reality we're currently in. Um, I think, you know, from like just very tactically from, from our own perspective, you know, what we've done is, again, I've mentioned the products we have in our suite. They lend themselves to supporting remote teams anyway. But what we've done is we've, we have a bank of content that we've created previously about kind of how, how to effectively run teams when you're not in the same location. So we've kind of, we've repurposed some of that content. We've created some new content to support you know, customers and new customers who are kind of going on this journey for the first time. So we've kind of like dusted off and that's some new video content, some new blog posts, uh, some new eBooks around the topic of remote work. So we've done that. Um, but I think more than anything, Alan, what we've tried to do over the last few months is be authentic. And what I mean by that is, you know, our products can absolutely support distributed teams. Um, but we, what we've tried to do is stay true to our focus here, which is, you know, it's not about whether they're in the same location or not. It's about how to achieve the best outcomes from the work they're doing. So from a marketing perspective, we have stayed on our message and on our, on our general content track um, without kind of, I suppose, trying to, uh, you know, chase, I suppose, the, um, you know, the tornado as it were too much, if that makes sense, by saying everything we write about is kind of our products for remote work. It's we've listened to our customers and we've tried to support them the best way we could through content, through our customer engagement team, et cetera, over the last few months. A significant challenge that's referenced again and again in marketing art articles online would be um, the difficulty in organizing people and systems for remote work. Can you share your experience um, managing people and systems from the past three months? 
Like I would say that like probably 90 to 95 percent of the move or the shift to remote working as as, our, as the marketing team at Teamwork has been seamless. Like there's been no noticeable drop of productivity. There's been no challenges about motivating the team or um, communicating. I think it's um, it's been really seamless from that perspective. There's a couple of couple of areas though which I think are are kind of areas where it's been been a bit more challenging. Um, one of them I think is around planning. So you know when you're not like for example we're in the middle of looking ahead to Q3 as a business now. So what what are priorities for the next three months coming up? And I think planning is definitely one activity which is better done you know face to face for the most part I think. And that's you know partly because when you need to have you know get into real detail or have maybe a very direct conversation about you know your vision for the next three months versus somebody else's i think being in the same room can lead to a better outcome from that conversation sometimes so there are kind of some things i would say but and again like i think you know when i look at the systems that underpin us i think as a company you know culturally we've been set up to to handle a distributed workforce kind of organically because of the nature of the products that we've been creating for the last 13 years so i think you know things like you know I work as a, as a head of marketing, I work very closely with the sales team. I work very closely with the finance team. And I think the great thing about the suite of products that we have, the teamwork suite that we kind of we base our, our, our entire kind of um, our business on is that you're never, you're never more than like a click away from a conversation with, um, I work very closely, for example, with our financial planning analyst. And, you know, I'm never very, you know, like I'm literally, I'm within, for example, teamwork, our project management platform, or I'm within our CRM. And I can, you know, very quickly engage in a chat with 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 individuals from from the context of being in the product. So from that perspective, I think the suite that we kind of have has been like really integral to making it a seamless transition to working remotely uh, as a team and, and and more broadly as a company. I would say. So you've you've covered the interactions with internal staff and processes. Speaking more to physical events that you've referenced there, what are your thoughts on a new market where there's a reluctance or a limitation on physical gatherings? It's like when you look at SaaS as 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 an industry and and software companies more broadly. Um, over the last twenty years, as marketing has got more digital, so it's very much online acquisition. It's about kind of you know understanding behaviors online and buying intent. You know, as we become more digital as a kind of a as a discipline marketing, it's been funny to see how the largest software companies have relied more and more on what I call experiential marketing. So that's where it's an event. So it's a physical event, or it may be direct mail. So it's a piece of, of physical mail landing in a customer or a prospect's office. Um, you know, or you know, there's there's other kind of physical kind of iter- you know instances of communities, like for example, customer communities getting together in a physical location. Um, so, so I suppose what we've seen is a, a, a you know a real drive towards more experiences, experience-driven marketing. Um, like think about Dreamforce, that Salesforce run, or HubSpot inbound. So these are huge events. These are take over entire cities and and so on. So we've seen that 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 evolution in marketing. And in the last three months, we've seen a massive stop. So events have been paused. Nothing's happening this year from an events perspective. So you know companies aren't getting face to face with customers. Um, you know, for, for I would say probably at least until 2021. I think the way I think about it, Alan, is well, first of all, I think a return to kind of events and kind of getting face to face with customers will largely be tied to kind of the success with probably like a vaccine for COVID. Like if if they get if if there's kind of assurance that that's being handled and that can you know that by and large most people can get better if they contract uh, COVID, then I think that's going to have an impact on a return to old or uh, the way events were running. Um, but I think equally, co- companies will just have to adapt and adjust because ultimately, like this week, for example, Collision is a is a major online tech event, uh, which which is usually I think hand hosted in in Toronto. Uh, it was hosted fully online this week, and I think it went off really well. So I think companies are just going to have to adjust. Virtual events will have to be the way for the foreseeable, and then after that, we'll have to just wait and see. But I think it's really co- companies just need to evolve, adapt to the situation. And trying to deliver the value they are delivering through those events through other channels, I would say. You've already pointed out a few areas of the suite that help you manage our marketing activities effectively. Are there any other tips that um, you think that marketing leaders should be aware of? Yeah, there's there's a number of ways I could approach this. I think one one way I think about kind of as a marketing leader, I think um, 
like as a marketing leader for, for the people in, in the team that I'm kind of, you know, responsible for leading um, at teamwork, I think like I, I would kind of, um, I would kind of encourage them, again, I've mentioned this earlier, to be authentic with your team. So, you know, it's, it's weird, you know, we're, we're at the three and a half months lockdown now. And, you know, I think earlier on, it was very much, you know, get on a call with each of your team every single day. So, you know, get on the video, see them, make sure they're okay. And, and that advice, I think, was absolutely sound. But I think after a while, for me personally, you know, that didn't become like an authentic experience because, you know, I trust my team. I know that if they need something, they'll come and ask for help with it. So I, I think what we found is we were introducing some behaviors, which after a while didn't feel like it was kind of fitted with the way we would be if we were in a physical location, if that makes sense. So I think one thing I would say for marketing leaders dealing with their team, be authentic. Um, obviously, you have to adjust to kind of um, to not being able to see them face to face, but to, to be authentic. Um, I think this is this is a random one, Alan. This might be madness, but sometimes it's okay to turn off the camera just to give somebody a call. You don't have to be face to face, and and you know that kind of breaks it up as well because I think you you hear there's a lot of talk about Zoom fatigue and just being a little bit you know tired from video face to face, and there is definitely an additional kind of you know, mental load by by being on camera and 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 so on. So turn off the camera, give somebody a call, you know, and just have a, a, a general catch up. And then I suppose, you know, you know, in terms of like, you know, how you manage your work, there's there's lots of tips. And if you go to Teamwork blog, you'll be there's plenty of kind of like practical advice about you know how to kind of cope during this time. But you know, kind of templating things and consolidating. Like one thing, this is just very practical again. You know, if you if you have meetings, try and consolidate them in the morning. So two or three meetings or whatever you have during the day, try and keep uh, your afternoons clear or your mornings, whichever you, whichever you prefer for those meetings. So just some basic tips like that as well. So there's lots of things, but I think just try and be authentic and try and listen and and you know, um, try and listen to kind of the relationships you have with your team and and, and respond accordingly. I would say a, a company like ours called Teamwork has a brand that focuses on togetherness. But uh, COVID-19 naturally caused the market to separate or even self-isolate. Could you share your thoughts on branding from the past couple of months? Yeah, so it's interesting, Alan, because um, just this week, actually, we've re um, just released a new report, which is called the State of Teamwork. And what we did with that report, Alan, was we we surveyed 2,000 uh, knowledge workers in organizations across the US and the UK. And what we were trying to really get a sense of is what were the fundamental kind of you know, um, what were the fundamental characteristics of high-performing teams and high-performing individuals within teams and within organizations? And I think we, like, if you if you go to teamwork.com, go to the resource center, um, you will find the report there and you can download it and get access to it. We, we, we might share that in the follow-up as well. But what we found coming out of that report, though, Alan, is physical location didn't come up in, that, in, in the survey. It wasn't whether uh, you were actually co-located with your colleagues. Like the things that came out for the highest performing teams were, did did you feel do you feel valued as part of your team, and whether you are um, whether you are sitting next to a colleague or not is not kind of going to determine whether you value them and, and demonstrate you you value them. So I think some things like that came out of the report. Um, you know, equally like there was one of the things that you know most you know more effective teams in terms of teams which deliver projects on time and on deadline and within budget they more often than not they saw themselves as friends with people on the team as well which was interesting you know this the idea of you know the concept of friends within the work environment but friendlier teams were are more productive based on the survey results we just put together so so i think you know i think you're totally right you know we talk about teamwork and and an aspect of teamwork is being together and and you know gelling as a team physically but i think you know ultimately you know, remote teams can can display all the attributes of of, of co-located teams, and I think the survey we've just produced kind of like just really kind of further supports that. Um, and I think you know, you know, if you know, a lot of large companies have gone fully remote, so they're never going to go back to or never going to force their employees to go back to a fully look, you know, co-located office. And, and if that's the case, I don't believe that from our perspective as a brand, which which preaches teamwork and the power of teamwork that won't have a ne negative impact on, on, on the, the types of things we talk about and we believe in. So my last question for today, I, I had Dan on last week there and he briefly mentioned that the marketing agencies or service-based companies in particular can benefit from teamwork. Can you tell us about your plans to serve customers who fit within this segment? 
Yeah, so I, I can definitely build a little bit on that from last week, um, Alan. So, you know, I mentioned earlier we have customers from 180 countries. We have customers equally from almost every industry there is. So we've sold to um, services businesses, agencies, financial services, every, every potential um, industry you could name, we've we've sold teamwork into, and we will continue to do so. That's that's absolutely part of our of our strategy, etc. I suppose what Dan will have articulated last week is that. What we found is that, you know, I guess a lot of the features we have and, and, and so on, they really do appeal to, to any type of business where you're selling time and projects and, and your services to, to your customers. Um, so some of the features that we've had over the years have definitely appealed to, to services businesses for sure. And, and what we've, I suppose, what we are, you know, doing as a company is, we want to kind of further support services businesses. So, you know, in, in the coming weeks and months, you're going to see some some pricing uh, changes in terms of like features within pricing packages, which will help services businesses to, to run client projects um, more efficiently. So there'll be some some updates there. And then from a, from a feature perspective, I don't want to give any of, of the secrets away from the product management team. But what, what I can say, though, is that, you know, teamwork is an incredibly powerful platform for running projects. So running client projects is really, really a great experience within teamwork. You've got all the capabilities there from, you know, great task management to, you know, visualization from to boards, to Gantt view, to, to, to milestones, all of the ways that a, a project manager needs um, to run their project can be done within teamwork. You know, where we want to extend our capabilities, I think, are either end of that. So core project management i think we've got a really really good product and um and and what we want to do is, is kind of build our capabilities in other areas like um resource management we have we have you know good capabilities there and we're going to develop more and then equally on the on the other side i guess of projects which is the reporting and the profitability side again we're going to be adding more capabilities there onto what we already have so there's going to be some interesting and exciting developments i think for our services customers but i suppose i definitely kind of iterate or or reiterate Alan, that you know, while we're definitely going to build some more features that are going to make make those customers even happier, um, we are going to be continue to develop the product for for all our customers, and uh, that's definitely not going to impact our ability to to serve all our paying customers currently. We're going to move over to the audience Q and A. I can see there are quite a few of them there with some very interesting questions. So we're going to start with a question here from Sandra, and she's just saying, "Thanks for sharing, Ray. Can you speak about your KPIs and how you report on them, please?" Yeah, great, great question. Um, it's yeah, it's really pre close to mind now because we're in Q3 planning at the moment, Alan. So, you know, um, every every business is different, but I think just I I can get practical with with Teamworks kind of KPIs from a marketing perspective. So, you know, we um, we're ultimately trying to influence. Uh, we I suppose no, to take a step back. So I mentioned our self serve business earlier, Alan. So the product led growth side of the business, which is customers come to Teamwork, they sign up for five or 10 or 50 licenses and they don't engage with our sales organization because they're happy to go ahead and put in their credit card and, and buy the license. So we have self-service. And then equally we have um, we have a sales assisted um, side of our business as well. So somebody comes in, they're trialing one of our products, they're interested, but they want somebody to help them through the buying process. So our sales people will help them to kind of convert and become a paying customer. So we have two strands to our business. But I suppose in terms of KPIs and metrics, so on our sales assisted side, we are looking at kind of key performance metrics would be um, pipeline. So how much pipeline do we do we have? Um, how, how much pipeline we're we creating to cover the amount of, you know, the target number of our bookings or revenue we're trying to, to hit in a particular time period, whether it's a quarter or a year. So pipeline is one thing and that is effectively uh, the value of the opportunities that we have created by the sales team at any given point in time. So pipeline is a, a critical one. Um, and then, you know, at the top of the funnel, you know, we're looking at, you know, just the number of trials that are being created um, is, is a, an indicator for us. And then equally, the number of marketing qualified leads that we're driving in to our sales development team uh, to, to pick up on. So those are, so pipeline, um, MQLs, marketing qualified leads, and then trials at a very top of the funnel perspective are our key KPIs. So they'd be kind of the, the ones I'd call out, Alan. Uh, the next question here is from Car Carlos. Uh, welcome to the webinar, Carlos. You're just asking, a big part of marketing is knowing your competition and what they're doing. What are Teamwork's biggest competitors and what's the strategy to differentiate from them? 
great question, Cara. Thank you for that. Um, so we like we have a, a number of well, we have it's a, a very kind of um, busy marketplace now. Again, you know, when we launched Teamwork 13 years ago, it was a much smaller uh, category of software, project management software, and obviously we have we have other products in the suite now, CRM, and we have content collaboration in spaces. So I suppose if I talk about Teamwork, um, our I suppose our the product which kind of makes up the most of ours our, our I suppose our customer base at the moment. Um, our key competition there would be, you know, um, companies like Asana and Rike and Monday.com. They'd be kind of in our space currently. I think our differentiation um, from from those companies one would be uh, look, the fact that we have a suite. So so it's not just a single standalone product that you know we integrate, for example, you know, with with Teamwork Spaces, another one of our products. And like, if you're a project manager, for example. You know, when you integrate a product like Teamwork Spaces with with Teamwork, you get a great project planning tool integrated with a great project management tool. So, like things like that can help us differentiate, uh, and and those are kind of some of the ways we're differentiating, Alan. And I think, you know, again, we've done a huge amount of customer research over the last six months, and you know, some of the key things that that are kind of called out is that there is a depth of our project management capability. So you can run like one of our customers was. Is the Special Olympics, so it was run in Abu Dhabi in 2019. You know, an event of that scale was run entirely on teamwork. So think about everything from coordinating all the volunteers through to coordinating all the uh, the meals for those volunteers. Or everything was run from teamwork. So I guess the ability to run a, an event as complex as that within a tool which can equally be equally be used to run a two-person, you know, um, you know, consulting business. There's, there's an unbelievable flexibility in what we can offer within our tool, which I think is another differentiator. So we just have time for one more question today, and this one is from Claire. So welcome to the webinar, Claire. And Claire's just mentioned there, as the director of marketing, do you have any issues when it comes to people or relationship management if teamwork were to go fully remote? I suppose the only thing that comes to mind is just the um, it's just the management of those those planning type activities where you know it's that face to face element, which I think sometimes can be helpful. Um, but, but equally clear, I, you know, there are many, you know, there are many examples of companies who are fully remote, who have, who started fully remote and stayed fully remote and have been, you know, ap, you know, astronomically successful. So I think that even with the challenges that we have today, Claire, you know, around planning and, and so on, I think over time we would adapt and we would find ways around those challenges and, and, and address them. So my own gut feeling is that, you know, if we had to stay fully remote forever, we would find ways around any of the challenges we currently have.